everyone, welcome back to the shop. I put myself on a two week sabbatical. Just because I've been doing videos for uh, three and a half years, every week I've tried to put out a video. And, uh, and I just decided uh, it was time for a little break. So anyway, what I've been doing is uh, coming down the shop and not really so much working on the plane, um, but just trying to get parts situated. So when it came time to go ahead and jump back into the build, everything was going to be ready to go. So even though I never really touched the plane, all the, all the hardware was getting prepped for it. So I think it's time to get back to work. All right, so as the video begins, you're going to see me in a different color shirt. That was from five weeks ago. That's usually how these videos are backed up. I'm usually backed up a couple weeks, but this one, uh, the footage was from seven, uh, from five weeks ago. Um, and uh, yeah, you want to make videos? This is what you get to do. So let's get started. So the thing is, I just don't know how well that's going to work, but that needs to be getting built in as I, uh, as I'm attaching all the stuff. That's why none of those hinge points are going to be glued on a tail. Um, none of the hinges will be glued in until, because the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to have the horizontal stabilizer because it's already mounted. I'm going to mount the fin, the vertical, um, and go ahead and cover those first. Then I'll cover the elevator and the rudder second, because then once I slide the elevator in, um, then I can slide the rudder in and have everything glued down. And that's gonna be the best way to do it. I mean, it's I can I can try to do it a different way. I had to do it a different way on the uh, uh, Taylor Craft to a certain extent, and that was a real pain in the butt. So I'm kind of thinking that that's going to be the best way to, and the smartest way to do it. So let me get things rolling and uh, we'll just see how things go. So I'm not leaving you guys out of the fun. When you're working with the Robart, uh, it comes with this little contraption. And what you're doing with this is make sure there are little Robart letters sit out because if all of a sudden you, for some reason, flip one over and hold it differently, it's not going to pit, put this thing directly in the middle of where you're trying to drill a hole. So let's get this set up. And then you can't see it, but what I do is, because I draw the lines, because I got the lines drawn on there, I'm going to come on in. Let's angle you down. So I come on in and I get it set up so that I can see the line through the hole. And then you just kind of pinch it tight against a piece of wood. Get out your drill bit, or get out your drill. And just take your time. And there you go, right in the middle. Now, what you're going to do, be right back, hang tight. All right, this is something that I do personally. When you put these things in, you can see how it does not want to go in any further than that because these do flare out. Let's see if I can keep it in focus for you. As you can see, they do flare out. It goes from round to almost kind of like a rectangular shape. And you want this pin as close as you can get to the hinge line itself. So what I do is, and I measured what it was going to take to get this piece in, the hinge in, it was about 165,000 on the from corner to corner on the long corners. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to slide that whole assembly in. So what I ended up doing was getting a wire sized drill bit. There was 170,000 drill bit, went ahead, drilled through this collar, pinned it in, and that's how deep I want this to go in. So then I'll take this, put it up against it, take your time, let it go all the way in. Pull it out, and if you look inside, you can see how well you can see it. You might be able to see it. It's stepped in. So it steps in just far enough so that when I take this 
hinge and push it in, I can get it, get it all the way to there. And then we're gonna have a really good hinge joint on it. I could possibly take that one size larger and I may, I just haven't come to that decision yet uh, because I like to have it set up so that, there we go, it's about that tight. And what I do when I glue them in, you're gonna come in and I use like a silicone uh, oil and just put a drop down there inside the hinge and make sure you're working it in because when you're epoxying it, you don't want anything to get in that hinge. So then you can just go ahead, slide it all the way in and when it sets up, it, it's gonna move back and forth because you, you oiled that up. So and it's gonna work out nice and usually when you first get the, the pin set up, Make sure that when you've got it in there, you rotate it, and that's gonna let you know how true that is to the angle, because earlier in this video, you saw the way I had it pitched. This would be like if I had it set in like that, is that you're not gonna have a good hinge line there anymore, so that you've gotta make sure that that's at 90 degrees to the hinge line. Easy peasy. All right, I'll get back to work. All right, the first changes had to be made to hardware was the little teeny interplane strut uh, brackets that a friend of mine, uh, Greg, uh, wrote CNC program and machined eight of them for me. The one thing I didn't know if I was gonna have to do, I was gonna try, I was trying to work it around with different type screw heads, with different height screw heads, um, just for clearance issues, and nothing was going to work out. So what I ended up having to do was come in with a number one wire size drill bit, uh, came in and just put a countersink in and then I found some brass screws just so that that brass screw can sit flush with the top of this thing and it gives me all the clearance uh, for the uh, for the screw and the nut um, to hold the interplane struts on. So those were done and yeah, I, I could tell you how I did it. Uh, it was very easy, but it's the little panic feature that I didn't have uh, uh, some way to steady this. It was in a vise, but I didn't have it set up. Uh, you were just kind of, you were just kind of going with it. Get it as close as you could by rotating the drill around at, at least two points, 90 degrees off, making sure that the the drill itself wasn't shifting side to side or fore aft, and then just go ahead and then running it down. And I ran it straight down through uh, the vise until until the head of the drill, the tip of the drill, bumped the vise. And I took it out and I tested it and everything worked out great. So these are done. All right, the other changes I wanted to make. Uh, the interplane struts, I wasn't too happy with it. They were far too flexible uh, and I was gonna have to make changes to them uh, just for distance. I didn't like this, the ability for it to slide up and down. I wanted rock solid points, just one hole on the top, one hole on the bottom. So we're gonna be doing this uh, this will be the next step to what we're doing, and this will be part later on in this video. All right, what I ended up doing was I went from, it was pretty much about 85 thousandths, and it was metric, it was basically two mil. Um, so I wanted to go to something a little heavier than this, and as you can see, I mean, these things are already, they've already got the banana-shaped bend to them. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Um, I want to go with something beefier. So I went with some uh, quarter-inch, some eighth-inch, uh, aluminum flat stock and I cut it down. I cut it down to size because it's thicker and more rigid. It doesn't need to be as wide as this. So it would be closer to scale and what you're going to see uh, on the stomp anyway. So we're going to do this. I'm going to take the tips of these things. So once I get the first hole drilled and I'm going to start with the first hole drilled at the top. So I'm going to go ahead drill a hole and then I'm just gonna scratch line around it how I want this set up, and I'm just gonna go back over to the, to the uh, bandsaw, cut it, and then uh, go over to the uh, sander and just, just tidy it up just so it looks good. So, and the way that these are gonna be done, this is the way that my little life works. Um, this is gonna be the left front, the left rear, right front, right rear, because I'm not gonna have these, the way that I always label my interplane struts and, um, my wing struts is that whatever goes on the left side that's where everything starts so if it was just like in my piper cub or my uh taylor craft i put one dot so if it's made out of uh if it's made out of aluminum which these are i'll just take one of these little tools and just punch a single dot on the on the left and then two dots on the right now the way these are going to be set up 
for the front will be one dot the rear will be two dots the right front will be three dots and the right rear will be four dots that way i know that the fronts are the odds and the rears are the even and so we know the sequence so that way um, if i end up taking them all the way off i know exactly which one was drilled for the wing placement on either side so we'll be good with that one so all right so let me go ahead and get the plane spun around so i can tell you all about that all right, it looks like the tail is almost ready and done, but it's not. We still have a little bit more to do on it. Um, let me go ahead and take the rudder off. We'll slide the rudder out. And then the vertical stabilizer. What I had to do with this one, because right now it's just sitting on top and it's still a little bit loose, but what I did was I came on in and made and I, got, I cut it out of some, some thick balsa, some heavy balsa, um, and then just went ahead and machined out a slot on the inside, dropped this down inside and glued it into place. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because down here, I wanted a little bit more strength because even though I'm gonna have wires that I have to drill the holes and get that, it's gonna be done today too, um, to go ahead and put some uh, brass tubing through uh, here on the horizontal stabilizer, here on the vertical stabilizer, then I'll make a bracket down here on the bottom. Um, but even though that's going to add strength to it, I just wanted this so that, and you can see it's set up for play, that's just so that when I go ahead and get it set in uh, to glue it into place, I could just take a uh, one of my little squares, lean it up against the side, um, and, and go ahead and just let the, let the epoxy set up. Uh, but this will be covered first. The, the vertical stabilizer will be covered first. The horizontal stabilizer will be covered first. Um, of course, the elevator and the rudder, because once I glue this into place, the elevator's got to be uh, hinged, glued into place. So it's going to be covered, glued into place before I put this on, because once I glue this into place, this elevator is permanent. She no come off, because I don't want to have to cut the tail of this off and then uh, we're gonna change the structure of this. If I had to, somewhere down the line, I can go ahead and do it. That's why I went ahead and put this little foot in the bottom of it, just so that it's got something uh, that's gonna wanna hold this rock solid. So, so we'll be good there. But anyway, let me go ahead and get the other camera. Let me pull the horizontal stabilizer out slowly. There we go. And show you what I did with the tail wheel. Okay, I was trying to find something good to make the tail wheel bracket out of. What came in the kit was this little piece of a little piece of wire. And although it it was nice, I mean it's I didn't have that much of an issue with something of this this weight, how thin and flexible it was. I just because it's metric once again there we are with that two millimeter um, and it wasn't bent at the right angles in the right spot for what I was doing because this was the tail wheel for a tiger moth the tail wheel for a stomp is completely different so what I did on that one was this believe it or not was tail wheel assembly from an old hangar 9 uh, p47 that uh, yeah the plane it was like a cat it had nine lives nine flights uh, and I had a problem with the uh, uh, transmitter. The module on the transmitter locked up when it got a certain temperature, it just cut out. So I lost that plane in the corn. And it was not, it was not, a, uh, it's not an enjoyable day. Um, so anyway, what I did with this one, and I'm hoping we're not gonna have too much in the way of focused issues here. Uh, I came in, had to rebend this one, uh, just, you know, heated it up, just tweaked it, made everything right. Then I got some uh, flat brass stock. Came in and this is how it's going to, see from the bottom, if we focus nicely. All right, that's how that's attached to the bottom of the fuselage. And then I had to just make a little teeny L bracket up top just so that this can pivot back and forth. And that goes into this little hole right here and that's what's gonna steer the rudder. Or excuse me, that's what's gonna steer the tail wheel through the rudder. Um, 
So anyway, that was, uh, so this is all ready to go, uh, with the exception of drilling the holes. So this, like I said, that's going to get done today. I'm going to do this, at least get the holes drilled in and have the dowel, uh, the, uh, the brass tubing put in, um, before I, I jump up to the, uh, to the wings cause the wings got to get remounted again. Um, so anyway, that's what I've been doing down here. All right, I think that's a really good place to end this video. Uh, in the past two days, yeah, I've been down here for two days. Lucky me. Um, I've got so much content recorded that it's probably going to be about two or three videos. So let's go ahead and end this one here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be doing the uh, the wing struts, the, the new ones, the interplane struts. So I'll go, go, we're going to cover the whole thing on how that was all set up, how everything was measured and uh, installed. So don't forget to watch that one. And then... This may be at the end of that one, that video, or it might be another video. Um, and all it has to do with this funny little bent up piece of aluminum. You'll have to wait and find out what it's for. So anyway, uh, thanks for all the new subscribers that have recently come on board. And uh, I'll see you guys next time I'm down in the shop.